Hey guys, Dr. Drunk aka here with a game for you in my tier 9 premium French battleship, Le Jean Bar. I'm divved up with Slavinator 69 and Silent Knight. We have a div on the other side that contains a couple of my 5D2 mates, Coop Dog and Penguin with the Hoogie. Looking at the JB's equipment, the only thing special on here is the engine boost module. We're also running the reload mod. Captain wise, we're running basically a tank build with expert marksman and uh, jack of all trades. Uh, otherwise, we're, uh, we're running Honorare for the boost to Expert Marksman and Adrenaline Rush. Domination on Northern Lights, it's almost always a center spawn. So, you have the option to either go around the 2 3 line or kind of float between B and C, and that's what we're going to do. Now, a clickbait title is obviously clickbait, and that's because the Jambar, well, it even lets a potato like me perform well in a battleship. And let's face it, I am not a good battleship player by and large. But the Jean Bar was removed from the premium shop specifically for the reason that it was overpowered. For the reason that it was too popular. And part of that popularity comes from its combination of ease of play and forgiveness. Uh, this is a very forgiving ship to play. Again, if a potato like me can make this work, then, well, <laughs> it can't be that bad. As you can see, I'm going to drift between B and C here. Um, one thing you're going to see in the middle of this that you're going to notice quite a bit, you're going to see a lot of use of the expert loader skill. Now, I know I can hear button screaming at me in chat to just say shoot what you have loaded don't waste time switching well for, that's I'm gonna say that's 100% correct but for a small caliber gunship like the the Jean Bar uh, my play style is to <clears throat> abuse that expert loader skill as much as possible to try and have the right ammunition loaded at the right time. See the div. My 5D2 div shows up. Coop and Penguin also doing the AC float that so many people do. Keeping an eye on the minimap, our Jutland is doing a good job of spotting. There's a Donskoy, there's a Missouri, there's a Sovetsi Rossiya. And then there's Penguin with his Jean Bar in a bow in. Uh, relatively central battleship position. So we're going to fire what we have loaded and we're going to switch to HE because HE Jean Bar is best Jean Bar. <clears throat> Nobody is targeting us right now. I <laughs> generally, when I see a Sovetsky Rosaya, I question the capability of that particular player large when you see that ship, assume that, usually safely assume that it's going to be a player of questionable tactical competency. And obviously as he dunks all of his shots into the water next to me, we come under fire from somewhere near sea. We don't know what that is, but judging by the volume of fire and the damage that it is doing, remember the on bar is basically coated in 32 millimeter armor. That's going to be a Kitakaze. There are two of them in this match, so pretty safe to assume that this is one of them. We haven't seen either one until one pops up on the other side, so we can safely assume this is a Kitakaze. We go dark for a split second. Uh, I think Slav actually disconnected at this point. Uh, I... I'm not sure what happened. I think he had an internet glitch and he just DC'd at this point. Um, Donskoy radar pops up. We're radared anyway. We're going to be lit. We might as well take a blind shot in the smoke. You never know. That was a very quick snap off shot. Now, there, it is something to point out that there is a weird. I can't see the air quotes, but feature in World of Warships where. 
HE shells leaving the barrels of your guns do not render immediately. There is a slight delay, so it's actually harder to hit, and you can see it there. It's actually harder to hit HE firing ships than it is to say hit an AP firing ship like Minotaur, Neptune, or any other bridge like Cruiser. We do get one pen. It's an HE pen, which means it breaks some of his modules. We don't know what it broke. But we are going to hope that it forces out his damage con for our Friesland or our Kikazi. Our Jutland is doing a good job pushing the A flank. <clears throat> he has a Donskoy, a Soyez, and an Iowa for support. Uh, here's a perfect example. Group turns broadside. Fire what we get, and we're going to... Actually, it's Penguin turning broadside. Fire what we get, and then we're going to hit the reload booster as we switch ammunition types. It's a, it's a... You can also do this when you're just using Expert Loader to cut reload time down. Very disappointing. We don't get any Citadels with that, but uh, 12k will definitely work. Of course, we have the reload booster active as the Donskoy pops out. We see where the Kitakazi was coming through the channel into sea, so we have to expect torpedoes are coming in. There they are. We're going to pull an old Notzer here. We're going to, going to face check this island, and we're just going to stop ourselves just in case that Kitakazi has torpedoes coming. Our Friesland is doing the Lord's work, making Coop stay miserable. Penguin is leaving. The Missouri is running. We have two DDs in C. Our Friesland is low health. Our Kitakazi is low health. Z44 is spotted. The Kitta is spotted. The question is, how do we play this? How can we make this work? Kitta on the other side manages to kill Silent. So we're down to one DD here in the middle and the Jutland out on the flank. Checking to see. We have a chunk. They have a chunk move. They have a Zed. They have a Kitta. They have a Kitta left. They have all their destroyers left alive. Z44. I I don't understand this. I don't understand this maneuver from the Z44. There was pretty well no way he was going to get away with this with the Donskoy right next to me, the Friesland right next to me, the Soyuz right next to me. He does drop torps and the first real mistake that I'm making here is I could have dove into the island that he's behind, but they're German Torps. They don't hurt that much. I have Damcon ready. I have Heal ready. I'm willing to take that damage in order to get a Destroyer off the map. <clears throat> Taking his guns, his torpedoes, and his spotting ability off the map is going to be critical. Now, Kitakazi is moving north. I incorrectly assume that I'm going to be able to spot him, that this smoke is going to fade, which it does not, and that I would spot him through the gap directly off my left bow. I can't spot him through that gap, unfortunately. And that sucks, because I just wasted a reload booster, hoping I was going to have shots on that kiddo. However, one amazing thing happens, and there's Coop. Broadside. And another unfortunate development. Five overpens for 10,000 damage is all I get. Over John Bard does have some relatively solid secondary, so we're going to put those to work on the Kitakaze <clears throat> while he is spotted. We do not have manual secondaries on this, so not going to get a huge buff out of that, but any little bit of a buff is going to help. Another 7k off Coop in his rune. Penguin is turned away, the Missouri is turned away. Realize that the entire battlefield has rotated probably about 90 degrees, so... It's time for us to put our health pool to use and do some work over here. Shots out on Coop, and we managed to put him back in port. Quick dodge on the Kitakaze's torpedoes, and he's finished off by the... I think it was the Jutland that got him? Possibly. <clears throat> I'm leaving the Soyuz to Cap, which, in retrospect, is a mistake. And, of course, we're gaming. We're gaming's uh, targeting somehow manages to miss the fact that I'm targeting. Alaska, not Missouri, and, well, those weren't even close. Unfortunately, the Soyuz goes down to the Missouri. 
And now we're in a pickle. What do we do here? There is a destroyer out there, actually. There's two destroyers available out there. There's a Chungmu out there. There's a Kinkazi somewhere out there. Our Alsace is bow tanking. He's basically going to lose a gunfight against three ships, including a Pomeranz. We're going to help this guy out. 12k into the broadside, upper belt of the Pomeran. We're going to use the island to our left side to protect our broadside here from Missouri and Alaska. This basically allows us essentially turn a 4v2 into a 1v2 in this case. We get the Palmer, not before the Alsace goes down. We're up on caps, we're taking C. We're being spammed again by the Kitakaze. This is getting old. But we're going to take shots on this Alaska. We're just going to try and work him down a little bit. And we're going to back up away from this Alaska, angling against the Alaska's shells and trying to get unspotted by that Kikaze or get behind the island where he simply can't hit us. Unfortunately, I'm constantly looking at the mini-map and going, damn it, Penguin's pushing in from behind, so... Well, I'm going to be spotted no matter what I do here. If I stay here, yes, I can be farmed by the Kitakaze, but that Alaska's on it is stuck in a 2v1 between the Azuma and myself. Really not an enviable place to be. Especially because the Alaska loves to eat penetration damage pretty much all over the place. Relatively hard to Citadel, but it does eat pen damage <laughs> on, a rel on a relatively regular basis, so... He is angling away, and he's dipped quite far out of here, so we're just going to fire HE at him at this point. He manages to go dark. But I believe this salvo is going to land and get us a fire. Does it? it? Yes, it does. It lands and it gets a fire for us. And that fire is going to take away a little bit and help bring him down. Penguin is being spammed down by a Friesland and a Jutland, which is not an enviable position to be in, especially in a boat which is coated in 32mm armor. So his time is going to be very, very numbered. Somehow we're even on ships and we're actually even on points, despite having a 3 to 1 cap advantage and a, a relatively even hit point advantage. Now, the enemy team has two DDs left, and we have no idea what the health pool on those two destroyers is. Chungmu has not been spotted for the entire game. The Kitakaze has not been spotted since somewhere around minute 7, so we have no idea what that health pool is looking like. That could be a full health Kitakaze. We, we don't know. Alaska is close to going down, and the Missouri is making a push in. Um, we're going to be backing up here, trying to get an angle on the Missouri. We only get a couple of shells over on the Alaska because of that island. Of course, the island marker does not necessarily display properly all the time. And oh look. There's a Kitakaze. Oh look, he's full health. And oh look, there's torpedoes. So at this point, well, I know that Missouri's going to push. At some point, the Missouri's going to push. The question is, when is the Missouri going to push? What we're going to do now, we're going to hold our damage control. Even though we did take a flood, we're going to hold our Damcon because we know that as soon as we get spotted, Kitakaze HE is coming. And oh look, there's Cable Guy. <clears throat> Again, the neat little trick of Expert Loader. Expert Loader with the Reload Booster cutting our ammo switch time down to approximately 30 seconds. Um, we fire just a hair too low as he's turning out very sharply. And uh, dunk most of those shells into the water. We're going for his rear turret. <clears throat> and of course, they all ricochet off that rear turret. It's rather unlikely that you're going to be able to take out Missouri's turrets in any case, uh, but upper belt shots from the Shambar armor piercing 2k will definitely do some substantial damage. Of course, reload booster significantly helps that. Secondaries are setting fires, and we're uh, now free to deal with the Kitakaze. Of course, Let's not forget the fact that he already used his reload booster, folks. I don't have to worry about torpedoes. 
The only thing I really have to do is try and stay dark for long enough that I can get my heal off. As you can see, I'm down to 3,800. I'm down to 2,700. I know he's coming out of his smoke. I'm going to have my heal in six seconds. I'm 2,500. He bounces all of his AP. I don't know why he switched AP. Down to 1,400. Heal goes off, and suddenly we're in the clear. I was trying to get AP into the superstructure, and I, I get that, but... <clears throat> No torpedoes. That he's a just a matter of time until he goes down. And of course, because we held on to our damage control, we're able to immediately extinguish the fire that he sets with his HE, and we're able to live through that push. At this point, we're up two ships. Uh, we have a three to one health advantage. We have a three to one cap advantage, and we're up by about 400 points. So the outcome at this point is essentially predetermined. Basically all we're going to do is get a few more shots off. On this one we have no heals, we have no reload boosters left, and we know there's a Chung Lu out there and we're down to about 12,000 hit points. And let's be fair, a Chung Mu can essentially one-shot us at this point. So we need to be somewhat cautious. And fairly shortly here, once this Iowa goes down, which, spoiler alert, this Iowa is going to go down. Chung Lu torpedoes. Once this Iowa goes down, I'm pretty much making the decision. Look, there's no reason to push this. We, we win in a minute and 30 seconds anyway, so at best we're going to damage farm here a little bit, turn away, and essentially just try to live and win this game. That being said, I understand why they removed the Jean Bar from the shop. Again, if I can make as many mistakes as I made in this particular game and still end up with 150-something thousand damage and a half a dozen kills, well, it, there is something a little bit, I'm not going to say overpowered, but a little bit broken about the Jean Bar. <clears throat> Indeed, it's a acquired taste. I'm not a huge fan of the French battleships, especially the Jean Bar and the Richelieu, but to say that it's not a very good ship, very capable ship, very functional ship, <clears throat> would really be a disservice to what this ship truly is. A couple of HE shells out here. We're just, again, trying to pad our damage stats in the last 20 seconds of the game. We're not gonna get another, sh another shot off here that's going to make any difference. Kitakazi, of course, annoyed. He's asking how much health did I have, and honestly, at the point in the match, I didn't even realize that I had been down to approximately 1,700 hit points. I tell him 3K. Doesn't make him feel any better anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The points take over. Let's go to the post-battle results. We make 900,000 credits. It's a great credit ship. We get a Confederate Dreadnought and a Kraken for 154,000 damage. Top of the team, 2,180 base XP uh, with the vast lion's share of the kills. We do play all these at our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash drdrunkaka. Head on over there and drop a follow. Helps out the channel quite a bit. And, of course, smash that like button and that subscribe button on Facebook like it owes you money. Guys, Dr. Drunk, a.k.a. telling you it is last call. The bar is closing. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here.